paper and it not affect the current. It not change the flow a little bit. Am I preaching to anybody that you're ready to change the flow of your life? You want, you're ready for something to just move differently. I'm telling you what to do. Build an altar in the middle of what you're going through. And it will change the, the current. It will change the course. It will affect the flow of your life. Anybody need the course change? So it's going a little more this way or that way. Build an altar. Makes things change. The other thing that building an altar in that river did, it's like the river changed personalities. I don't know if a river can have a personality, but that's the best way I know how to describe it because before this altar was built in the middle, it was simply known as the boundary. It was what stood between they were the wilderness and the promised land. It's what kept them from possessing the promise. It was their boundary. That's all it was known for. It's what stopped Moses. But after that altar is built, you're in the book of Joshua, okay? There's a whole lot of the Bible left. You can hardly read a book of the Bible after that without coming across a miracle that happens at the Jordan River. It's full of it. I don't even have time to go through piece by piece. All kinds of things start happening at the Jordan River. Things that you, a few, uh, just, just a few pages further on, there's a Syrian king who has uh, got leprosy. And he comes to see the prophet. And the prophet says, you need to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. How many of you remember that story? <laughs> And that, that, that Syrian general, he said, there's better rivers. He even names two other rivers. You want to get into it biblically? He says, are not the rivers of Abana and Fafar better than the Jordan? In other words, I've seen the Jordan River. If this is about getting clean, that's a muddy thing. But I, the, these other two rivers are, he said, no, no, no. It's not about what's muddy. It's not about clean. It's about obedience. The secret to your miracle is obedience. This is good. Obedience gives God an excuse to bless you. Anybody want to be blessed? Get obedient. And, and he said, you've got to dip in the Jordan. Why do I have to dip in the Jordan River? And the prophet said, look, it's a long story. I don't have time to tell you, but there's some rocks in the middle of that river, and it's forever changed that river, and that is a river that has an altar built in it. And because that altar is still there, that river has an element of obedience to it. You go dip in the Jordan River, and he did. And the Bible says that his skin became again like baby's skin. It seems as you, kind of, you keep turning the pages, they were chopping wood by a river. And the Bible says an iron axe head. Now you've got to understand how valuable iron was in those days. Difficult to make. They, they didn't have furniture. You couldn't just go buy iron. It was very costly and diff may have been may have cost more than gold at those times, but it would last. And the guy's chopping wood, and you know how an axe head can work its way off? And the axe head flew off and fell in the river. And I can hear the prophet say, well, it's a good thing it was the Jordan. Why? Because there's an altar in that river. That river is obedient now. And he spoke and told them what to do. And the axe head floated up. Where? At the Jordan River. The one with the altar that's in it to this day. The one that somebody built an altar while they were going through stuff. I, I could go on and on about things. How the prophet decided one day he's going to cross the Jordan River. And, and all he did is take his coat off and just hit the river once. Hmm. It's like the river said, don't hit me again. What do you want me to do? Part. And the river parted, <laughs> and he walked through. I'm talking to you about the result of building an altar in the middle of whatever you're going through. When it came time for Jesus to get baptized, where did he go? 
And when he did, the heavens were opened. I mean, the Jordan River has got such a name. You can go in Christian bookstores and buy little bottles of Jordan. Don't drink it. They have, <laughs> you take Holy Land tours, they have, everybody wants to get baptized again in the Jordan River. My friend Benny Hinn, he'll baptize 500 at a time when they go with him over there. Why? Because there's something different about a river that's had an altar built in it. And can I tell you, there's something different about a life that's had an altar built in the middle of difficult circumstances. It's never the same. What are you trying to tell us, Tommy? Oh, it's pretty simple. I'm trying to teach you that even though you're going through something, even though you might be in the middle of something, even though you, 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 you're in the middle of a problem, oftentimes when you're in the middle of a problem, you're also in the middle of a miracle. You just don't know about it. It's easier to look back and say, you know, that was great. But while you're in the middle of your miracle, just build an altar. I'm trying to tell you in simple language, worship God regardless of what you're going through, what, what the newspapers and the, what, just say, I'm going to worship God anyway. I wish somebody would just worship Him right now. Say hallelujah, clap your hands, do something. Just say, I'm, I want the devil to know that, that his circumstances do not dictate to me my level of worship. I might have a bad day, but God's having a good day, so I'm going to worship Him. Oh. i got to quit, but the, the best story I know about this whole process is the story of Paul and Silas. You ever heard that story? Yeah. You know, uh, they, they went to a place called Philippi. You, you're familiar? Do you know that that was Silas' first missionary journey with Paul? He'd never been before. He probably bought a new suit just so he could sit on the platform and, you know, look good at the Philippi crusade. He was going to be styling, profiling. And they get to Philippi, and instead of banners and, and people welcoming them, they're arrested, thrown in jail. Silas's eyes are big. And, and, and the Bible says, the, the Bible picks up the narrative, it says, at midnight. They finally got put in jail at midnight. I don't know what happened between their arrival in town and midnight, except that they, they got, you know, book, fingerprint, picture taken. And, oh, and the Bible says, and they got beaten. It takes a while to get a good beating. And they were in jail at midnight, their hands in chain, their feet in shackles, and, and their back has been beaten, and it's dark. You ever been at midnight in your life? In a place of pain where you feel bound? And at this point, Paul leans over to Silas. I mean, things have finally calmed down. He can finally talk. This may be, you know, the... This may have been Paul's first chance to talk to Silas after their arrest. Silas is sitting there saying, I just wanted to come with Paul on a missionary journey. And, si and Paul leans over to Silas and he says, Silas, are you ready to sing? I can hear Silas say, Paul, did they hit you with that stick as hard as they hit me? I don't feel like singing. I'm hurting. I need some Advil. And, and, and by, anyway, it's, this is not platform. And Paul, we're in prison. And Paul, it's midnight. And if this is what they did to us tonight, only God knows what they're going to do in the morning. And Paul, I, my hands, I can't sing. Paul said, no, 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 you don't understand. Whatever we were going to do on that platform, we're going to do in this prison because God is not limited by the circumstances.